What's up, world? This is Kerry Kushi Brothers. And you're on, you know, I got sold. So, you know, kind of talk to me about how you originally got into producing, you know, early on in your life, what made you want to pursue a career in it, and how you, you know, oh, turned producing. it into a career. What basically got me into producing was, like, my love for hip-hop. Like, the first time I heard a rap record, I was nine years old, and I wanted to be an MC. Mm -hmm. And from that point on, I was in little groups and stuff from, like, 14, and I had a friend doing the beats and stuff, and after a while, it was hard to find them to do beats, so... Yeah. I started getting my little pieces of equipment and making my own beats, just to rap for myself. Yeah. And the people used to be like, oh man, I like that beat, can you make me one? Mm -hmm. So I just started doing beats and making for other people. And even when I was working with other people to do beats, I, I didn't realize, oh, I would get my input, like, oh, I like that part, change this part, let's do this part, whatever. And at that time, I didn't realize that was producing. Yeah, stuff. So yeah. It kind of like happened gradually, naturally, just from trying to make the music sound the way I wanted to. Yeah. You know okay. I mean? Cool. And uh, you know, what was your first major placement? First major placement was basically performing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That, that whole album. And you know, how did your work with Alicia kind of springboard you into other opportunities? You know, because everyone knows your free work with her. Basically, I was like, you know, when it came out, it came out big. It was a big surprise. Yeah. Like, at the time when we uh, well, basically, I, I, I basically met her in. Like early 90s in the Washington Square Park area. Mm -hmm. At the time in New York, you see anybody outside freestyling, having yeah. cyphers, and I would keep in touch with a few people. She was one of the people. And uh, when I got a few, uh, uh, both an SB1200 and a four track and a keyboard, yeah. and I used to have that in my crib and like the back that I liked, you know, felt the vibe and just making little jam sessions and cyphers. You know? Yeah. And, um, she would come by and we would just like mess around, just make stuff to vibe on. I would tap out some beats, she would play the piano, and just for fun, just making cassettes at the time. Mm -hmm. you know, just four CDs and all that. Yeah. And uh, eventually time went by, years went by, and she finally got her first contract. And um, she approached me and was like, you know, you know, they got me working with this producer, that producer, this big producer. I don't like what I'm doing with them. I like what I'm doing with yeah. them. And I was like, oh, yeah, cool. You know, you know we're just figuring it out. And she was like, well, I want you to work on my album. And I was like, okay, yeah, mm -hmm. all right, because I believe in that and everything. But as far as, like, experience of being a real producer, I never really looked at myself as a producer. So I was intimidated, yeah. you know. But I was like, you know what? You believe in me. I believe in you. Let's give it a shot. And um, that's pretty much how yeah. it all started. Okay. Um, from then, it's like when Falling came out, it was like number one. The album was number one. And it was just like... Someone called me and was like, the album is number one. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. you funny, man. You funny, you know. And a little late. So yeah. from that, you know, I was looked at as a genuine producer. Yep. And from there, you know, I was Keisha Cole. And I always was her producing partner from the beginning, Alicia. And we worked with Nas, Rock Kim, Christina Aguilera. And I was real picky and choosy, you know. And that's the thing about now, which is good. It's like, finally, I'm taking on my own artist. Mm -hmm. I have another artist by the name of Andre. She's mm -hmm. from South Africa. And um, she's a um, French and South African. And with her, I'm doing a different style. Like okay. Expects. So I'm just like, you know, even though it's been like 10 years since that first major placement, I still feel like I'm just getting started. Okay. Yeah, talk to me a little bit more about that. You know what you're trying to do with the label, and you're, you mean you got you're working with Mateo now. You know, yes. we'll start with him. You know, right. how did you originally meet him, and what did you see in him that made you want to you know continue to work with him? Well, basically, I met Mateo through Produce in LA, and he bought me a record by the name of Complicated that Mateo done uh, while he was on MySpace Records, and he was like, you know, we have this record. It's, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. It's pretty well. Yeah. I want to start a label, I want to have my own artist, let's 
students. Mm -hmm. you know? Okay. Take me through some of the other artists you, you know you currently have on your label or who Basically, you're working with. Right now, I have two artists and then talks with four other people. Okay. I'm taking my time. It's no rush. It's not like I'm just trying yeah. to come with everything. It's like I like to take my time with projects and, and do artist development, yep. which is pretty much unheard of now. Yeah. You know I mean? <laughs> and, um, it's a young girl I have by the name of Andre. She's originally from South Africa. Mm -hmm. Her story is phenomenal. Like she grew up in Zimbabwe. Excuse me. You know, when I say South Africa, I mean yeah. South Africa, but the country is Zimbabwe. And, um, she actually grew up in an African village. And she had a scholarship at, at uh, 15 to go to Stanford University. So mm -hmm. She was brilliant. And uh, I discovered her on MySpace at the time as well. You know, mm -hmm. playing, playing that. Yeah. She <laughs> always hit me up. I like your music. I like your music. And never really asked me to listen to her music. Okay. So one day I just clicked on the music and I heard the song called Revenge on Me. And I was blown away. I was like, wow. You know, it was just like low quality, just a little tiny keyboard sound in her voice, but I love the way she sounded and the lyrics of what she was saying. Mm -hmm. So I hit her, I was like, hey, did you write that song? She was like, yes. I was like, do you have more songs? She sent me a few more songs, and I can't make this out. I'm into great voices, I'm into songwriting. She has a very unique voice, and I like her songwriting. So I flew out to LA and started working on her, and this was like a few years ago. Okay. So she'll be coming out soon. Um, this year with well, like April, May. Okay, cool. You know, looking back at your production career, besides Alicia Keys, who's been like a favorite artist you got a chance to work with or has oh, been like a most fun collaborating with her? Oh, man. I mean, Rock him, yeah. Nas, Kanye, 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 I've been pretty fortunate. Like, everybody I worked with, everything worked well. Yeah. I haven't had any disaster stories. You know, sometimes it doesn't work out. You know? mm -hmm. Pretty much everybody, but it's always a pleasure to work with someone you grew up in mind. Like, yeah. I can't. Yeah. So that was one. Okay. You know, just one last question. Uh, what's your favorite Alicia Keys song that you helped her, you know, create? If you had <laughs> I know. <laughs> I mean... I was just I I can't even really answer that. It's like my favorite becomes the last one. Oh, this one's my yeah. favorite. And then like no yeah. one comes, oh this one's my favorite. I know it's a I tough mean, question. Yeah, and it, it, it all depends on the mood. It all depends on the mood. Mm -hmm. I mean, now when I just listen to the stuff, it's like it's just the the, the bodies of work all together so yeah. to have it and you know, like I said it's been ten years since the first album. Like so yeah. just to think like, whew, all this time flew. Mm -hmm. and I can play the album now. You know, I might be biased, but it still sounds relevant yeah. today. You know what I mean? And yeah. that's pretty much the goal I've always set, trying to make timeless music. Because mm -hmm. all the music I like, the old music, you know, from the 70s, the 60s, even the 80s, and, like, listen to a lot of records that I like, it still sounds great today. Yeah. I play it for my kids, and they're like, what's that? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And that's the goal I try to make. Okay. Know? Cool. Respect that. Definitely yeah. like that approach.